morning and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. Um, we're all fine. It's Monday morning and I have the day off. So today I've done the school run and it's time for a video. I'm going to try and hopefully get a couple in today. Um, recently I did a my personal top 10 tobacco uh, fragrances and I did say in the video that I will be looking at doing a, an, another video for the number one spot perfume, which was Stefan Umber Lucas and Nui a Doa, a night in Doa, the Qatarian capital. So we have an Eastern exotic tobacco perfume. Well, it's not just a tobacco perfume, it's a perfume with lots and lots of other things in it. So as promised, um, I'm gonna do, uh, we're gonna talk about this one today uh, during this video. Um, and on a rare occasion, we're actually gonna look at the box as well. So this is how it comes, it comes like this. Dun, dun, dun. And then you slide that out. I don't normally talk about boxes and I don't really care for them, but I think when the presentation is lovely, it's worth mentioning. So that's how your perfume comes. Presentation is phenomenal. Um, obviously the box is very sweet, it's very good. It's, I mean, it's a luxury perfume, it's an expensive perfume, so to expect that. But then we have the bottle and the bottle is something else. So I'm actually gonna spend a little time on the bottle. So there you have your 50 ml bottle. I don't know if you can see that. This is heavy, this is beautiful, this is incredibly pretty, and it feel, just feels lovely to hold. And then you have this cap, which is obviously very exotic, um, very heavy too. Um, the whole perfume, the, everything about it, from the smell, to the performance, to the packaging, to the presentation, is top, top notch. High quality, um, beautiful perfume. So it did get to my, I mean, I've not had it long, um, but it did get to, my, to be my number one tobacco fragrance. Um, so I want to explain to you why I feel that it, it, it got to, to, to the top spot, why I love it so much, um, and how it wears, basically. Who can wear it, that kind of thing. Usual format. So what we'll do is we'll go through the notes. I'm wearing it at the moment. I smelt magnificent on the school run. I could see all the other mums and dads just gazing in admiration at how wonderful I smell. Actually, that's not true. I just felt superb. Um, when I wore it. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the notes, we'll talk a little bit about the perfume, how much it costs, who can wear it, where it's good for, what it's, you know, what situations it's going to shine in, that kind of thing. But before we do that, um, a little bit about the brand, Stefan Umber Lucas 777. I think they've used the sevens because they're lucky and lovely and wonderful numbers or what have you. Um, there are 21 perfumes in the collection. They are very much at the luxury end of things. Um, I've tried quite a few of them and they're all lovely. It's a house I would love to own more of and maybe at one point I will. Um, I think they came out around 2013 and I think the latest one that was released is probably 2019. There may be some more ones coming out. But Stefan Umbert Lucas was the nose for So Oud, uh, Neza Nez as well. Uh, and then obviously this is his brand. So, you know, as I say, this is a luxury, luxury premium band, brand that are expensive. Um, and I'm not one for sort of banging on about very expensive perfumes, to be honest, but I do think in this case they're worth it. Often I think we've got, there are brands out there that have got slightly delusional, they're selling their perfumes for extremely, you know, for lots of money, for extreme high prices, and I don't think a lot of them are worth it. Uh, and whether any perfume's worth a lot of money, that's only, only you can really answer that one. But I think these are expensive, but I think they're worth it, and I will explain to you why. So let's have a look at the notes, and I will have another little spray, and we will talk some more about Un Nui A Doa. Okay, so now's the best bit of the, uh, of the video for me, so get to spray a bit more. As I say, I'm wearing it, but it's nice to refresh the top notes. Uh, Atomizer is fantastic, as you would expect for what you're paying. So this, I think, retails at 165 pounds for 50 mils. So it's not a cheapy. But um, if you're like me, tight, uh, and you like to sort of patrol discounters, they do come up. I think Notino was where I got that one from, and it was way under half price. So it was a real bargain and one I could not wait to take advantage of. So no qualms about buying that. I mean, I got this for less than say like you know the new Sauvage Alex here which is is quite outstanding really but there you go okay so whilst that beautiful smell settles down we will look at the notes so on the top you have fennel you have mandarin orange and then you have ginger so you've got some savory elements with some sweet citruses in the middle you have immortel and you have tobacco and then on the base you have vanilla and you have vetiver so this 
um, perfume is meant to kind of give you an olfactory tour of Doha at night. You know, there's spices galore, this sort of Eastern mystical, exotic environment. Um, and that's been conveyed into a perfume. And it works really, really well. I've never been to Doha. I've never been to Qatar. So um, what it really smells like, I don't know. But the, interest, the interesting thing for me in the opening is this blend of citruses with sort of sharp ginger and fennel. Now, fennel is used in cooking a lot. It has a slightly aniseed like vibe to it. And it's also quite a savoury element for me personally. So when you're mixing sweet and savoury, you get quite a heady combination. And it works really, really rather well. It's punchy though at this stage, but it, it's weird because it's it's orange do dominant. Okay, the mandarin is the, the, the note that you'll pick out the most, but it's not light. It's actually quite heavy and intense. And I think that's the ginger kind of beefing it up and making it a little spicy. And you do, after a while, the first couple of wearings, I couldn't really pick out the, the fennel in it so much. It was almost like there's a, a slight herbally vibe to it. But when you kind of really look for it, then you will find this slight undertone of aniseed. And it almost, I mean, it's, it'd be really easy and lazy for me to say there's almost like a medicinal opening. Um, and I don't think there is, but I can see why I would think that, if that makes sense. There is a, just something a little bit almost medicinal there. And I think it's just a fusion of everything together, but it works so, so well. As this happens, then you're coming into a stranger period, actually, because in the middle you have Immortel and tobacco, and the tobacco does become quite dominant. Now, Immortel can sometimes smell quite herbally and it can smell a little like tobacco so i think it's a good choice because what it does is it beefs up the tobacco now some people find that immortel can smell very much like curry i don't get any of that from this at all it's just a little bit exotic and it's really really nice but i think there's some secret notes in here i think there's some support notes that haven't been put into the to the actual listing because as it starts to make this change this blast of an opening starts to to, to move towards being more of a tobacco dominant fragrance I'm picking up something floral in here, and I think it might be orange blossom, or it could even be a little tiny dash of neroli. But it's not um, like a super fresh kind of um, floral note in the background. It just seems to lighten the mood a little bit. And I think, I'm not entirely sure, I could be wrong, but I'm sure that there's something like orange blossom, or maybe even neroli just lurking there, just to lift everything up a bit. And then the immortel and the tobacco do start to take over. And of course, you have this vanilla on the, vase, on the base with vetiver. I don't really pick up the vetiver too much, to be honest. It's one that I really, really have to look for. And sometimes I think I can smell it and sometimes I can't. So I'm not going to you know, BS you and say, oh, yeah, the really strong vetiver on the base. I don't get a really strong vetiver on the base. I do get something a little earthy and a little, um, not green, but a little almost like woody or, or something like that. And I think that's probably the vetiver. I, again, it could just be my nose and the perfume may be working differently for me, but I don't really pick out um, a classic vetiver on the base, but I do get the vanilla and the vanilla adds to this um, tobacco thing. And it is sweet. When it dries down, especially, you're getting a, a real syrupy vibe to it and it feels and smells like a spiced syrup or syrup that you've taken You've taken tobacco and you've poured syrup over it um, and then let it sort of heat up in the sun or something like that. And that's the kind of vibe I get. This is a sweet, sweet perfume as well. It's much, much sweeter than I would normally go for, but it's clever because there's that delicate spicing and these little hints of savory um, elements within the perfume, it doesn't become cloying. Um, it is sweet though, and it's a lot sweeter than I would normally like, but I think it works perfectly. And then with the dry down, it's just, Oh, it's so, so lovely. Interestingly though, <clears throat> when I first wore this, and I mentioned this in the last video, I wore it to work. Work's always a good testing ground for me in perfumes, and I like to, to, to give them a run out at work to see how they get on. Now, a lot of my colleagues, I mean, quite often I work on my own, but when I'm working with colleagues, pretty much all of them know that I'm into perfume. Um, so it's always kind of like a, a point of chat, or you know, quite often we talk about perfume when I'm at work. Um, and everyone picked up on it straight away, which is interesting because I thought, although this smells very strong on your skin, it doesn't really project that much. It kind of, I thought was a, a beautiful skin scent. But what I then realized a couple of hours into wearing is it, is the sillage that comes off, the, off, off with this is awesome. You leave such a, an exotic and sweet and really, really enticing trail behind you. All my colleagues picked up on it. And then later I popped into a shop and a woman was really impressed with it as well. So she was asking me what perfume I was wearing. So again, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't think it would be for anybody other than me, but it seems to, especially the first couple of hours, first two to three hours, it seems to have a wonderful sillage. 
um, and people will become aware of it. It doesn't seem to project that much, though. Uh, I mean, and again, it's difficult to judge how far a perfume you're wearing projects when you're wearing it yourself. It's almost impossible. You know, it's always guesswork. So when reviewers are saying, oh, it projects out this far or that far, take that with a pinch of salt. It's only their opinion. And, you know, how do you me measure um, a perfume's projection? It projects an arm's length. Does it? I don't know. Um, it seems to kick out, which is the way I would describe it. Um, but in this one, it doesn't. It seems to sit on quite close to your skin for the entire length of the perfume. But I do know for a fact now, obviously, as we've just discussed, that there is a really strong sillage with it, which I think is brilliant. It's one that will get you noticed. I can't wait to wear this for a formal occasion, obviously, you know, being a little light on the trigger. And there the perfume sort of sits and it lasts a long time. When I wore it to work, when I came home from work, it was still very noticeable on my skin. So the performance is excellent. It's not a beast. You know, it's not vulgar. It doesn't kick out or anything like that but it does give you a wonderful sillage and it is very long lasting. So I think it's perfect. It's an enchanting fragrance to wear and I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm really, really blown away by this. It's such a beauty. Um, I'm already thinking I need to keep my eyes peeled for another bargain because I, would, I wouldn't like to be without this one. I think with winter coming, I'm gonna be wearing it an awful lot. So when it comes to, you know, when is this a good one to wear, it's definitely, because of the sweetness of it, it's definitely gonna be a colder weather perfume. Um, I think in the heat, it would be too much. I think it would be a little bit too cloying. You might get away with it on a summer's eve, but even then, if it's really warm, I would kind of probably wear something else. Um, but I don't know, a spring evening or one of these lovely autumnal evenings like we're getting at the moment, it's just gonna be divine. So when it comes to who can wear it, I think pretty much anyone can wear this. It's sweet enough, well it is sweet, it's very sweet. So I think the younger thrusters will love this one because it is sweet, but us more mature fragrance enthusiasts will certainly enjoy it because I absolutely love this one. It's 100% completely unisex. It's one of the, the tobacco fragrances that in my collection I think will smell fantastic on a woman. My wife isn't a massive fan of tobacco fragrances, but I will definitely think she would appreciate it. I'm gonna try and get her to wear it and see how it smells on her because I think it would be brilliant. So completely unisex, um, completely ageless. I think it would be perfect for formal occasions. I, you know, I don't really have that many formal opportunities to wear a fragrance, but if I'm going out for a nice meal, I will wear it. If I'm going out for an evening, I will wear it. If I'm just popping down a pub to meet my mates for a couple of pints, I will certainly wear it. Um, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, performance is exactly what you want. It's not too big, it's not too too little. It works incredibly well. And it, as I say, it lasts long with a really, really, um, noticeable sillage for the first few hours. So in terms of value, I think it, as I say, it's an expensive perfume, but I personally think it's worth it. I think it's beautiful. Um, and I can't wait to explore more from the house, to be honest. Um, as I say, I've smelt a lot of them and I, I would love to have all of them, you know, bottles everywhere. But I think the wife will freak out, so that probably won't happen. Uh, but there you go. So in closing, this is my number one tobacco fragrance um, for a reason, because it smells divine. And I have to go back back into that again. Sorry, I know we're kind of all out of, um, all out of bonk here. But it is, the tobacco is very noticeable, but you wouldn't say that this is a pure tobacco fragrance, okay? If you like tobacco fragrances, you will love this. If you find tobacco fragrances a bit too much, you will probably still like it as well, because you've got this um, citrusy, almost floral-like condensed opening, which is really exotic and really rather interesting. And then obviously you dry down into this sort of gourmand, um, tobacco-driven gourmand. And it is a gourmand. Um, and so, you know, some people may think, oh, I don't really like gourmand fragrances. This might not be for me. Well, it might not, but work, give it a go because I think you may be surprised. It's certainly different to how I thought it was going to be. I remember all the, the ages ago when I first tried this in Harrods, I thought it was stunning. Um, but I couldn't really work it out. And now I've spent a lot of time with it, or quite a lot of time with it. I just think it's it's phenomenal. Um, a really welcome addition to my collection, one that I absolutely adore, and I think you would do too. So if you do get a chance to pop into Harrods and smell it, please do. And if you can find someone that's doing samples of it, crack on and get a sample because it's a stunning fragrance. So there you have it, my rather gushing review of Stefan Umber Lucas 777 and Nui Doa. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, as I say, trying to get another one done today as well. Um, and we will see you on the next video. So thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure making these and we really hope you enjoy it. So from me and Rich, cheers, thanks and bye.